Hello everybody, welcome back to my vlog, to my channel. There's another audio amplifier circuit, or kit. And this one is a I, 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 am, ma, I am a uh, two pieces MX50 SC 100 watts times two dual channels audio power amplifier board. Hi-Fi Stereo Amplified DIT. I'm just reading the description from the page. I just chucked that page up there for you quick so you can have a look while I empty this out. So there's a whole bunch of components here. There is for two channels, so the individual channels, which is nice. I'm only going to build up the one. I do like the, uh, I do like that on there. It's pretty cool, pretty cute. Well, what's that say? There you go. Information there. Information on there. Oh, what's that it says about the gain? So you can adjust the gain. 22, put a 470R in, or a uh, 330, uh, a 31 gain. Alright, that's pretty good. The voltages. Alright, so that's, uh, that's interesting. That's on the board. So we got some heat sinks here, there's all sorts of chips here. This is um, the KDT, is it? KTDs. These are Korean jobbies, the main output chips. Uh, 1047 may look familiar, but I don't think it's the, the same. I'll stick a thing up on the, the screen for it. Uh, we got a whole bunch of the same resistors which is nice and at least we then have like loads and loads of different values I can just do a one value on here and I know what the rest are that's why it's good to have the old meter in the background there and we got um, some more I believe the transistors I'm not sure we'll have to look them up what we got what's that uh, that is for anybody you taking notice? Uh, it's probably the same thing. They can't all be the same, right? Well, and my, my, my. Are they all right, man? You know what I mean? Nope, wrong way around. There we go. And you get all the screws, and there's some terminal. Uh, for some spade connector female jobbies to go over there. So, uh, our capacitors here are, that says it's a Rubicon, which is quite nice. We do like Rubicon. And what we got here, we got uh, MXB Samyong. Alright. 50 volt jobby, 100 microfarad. I presume the rest of these are going to be the sort of same. <laughs> I wonder if that was. Well, it certainly seems like there's been one Rubicon so far. Oh no, this could be a Rubicon. Yeah, yeah, we got another Rubicon. These are uh, 470 microfarads at 16 volts. Yeah, it's quite nice. We've got some nice little uh, like these 0.1 ohm. 5 watt resistors, and they're going to go by the power output, and, uh, and some other, you know, some metalized uh, capacitors and such, and big on there, presume, let's have a look at this, what's that, 335, that's uh, 33, nano, no, not micro, it's nano, not sure, yeah, let's stick this on there so I can get a... Don't tell me what that is. In the background there. Uh, 3.4. So that's probably the input then. So uh, a Luke. I'll put there. Yeah. 3.3 uh, microfarad. Okay, so that's our input. Probably, yeah, from the positive one side of that. All right, you know then. So what we're going to do then is um, some looks like one watts. 
resistors, we've got all our bits here, the insulators and that for the transistors. That's nice, but it doesn't look like, it looks like there's just four insulators, so these ones here, I suppose the casings, no, yeah, just looking at the back, because some of the casings don't have any metal, so you don't need to insulate them from here, and this has got this black stuff on anyway, but even so, you should still um, probably put insulators on if you need them, if you've got metal backs, but these ones don't have, so that's, uh, that's quite okay. Alright then, right, I'm going to build up one of their channels, I'm not going to build them both up right now, and we're going to test it, and just see what it's like, and uh, go from there, alright? I'll build it up off camera because it just means I can just potter around it in my own time and, uh, and get back to you. Okay guys, so here it is built up. Uh, I've got it on a heat sink already. Everything's in there correct. I've put the, these, I didn't have any of these uh, connectors so what I had to do was uh, go through my old box of cables and found some of the connectors. Uh, so here it is. I've got it on a heat sink. And the knee's looking good, get a nice little clean. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what it is. Is it an owl? Is it a, uh, is it a panda bear? Is it? I'm not sure what it is. But okay, so that's uh, ready to go then. And what we're going to do is we're going to get it connected up to our uh, inputs here. So this is our main input. This is going from the wave generator. And then we got our uh, power and our um, eight ohm output. So we've got a ground here that does for everything. And then we've got our output here for the um, audio. And we have everything this bunch of wires. If I get this right, if I put this out to this now, there are a bunch of wires from the power supply. So I'm going to use the power supply. And on this side, it should be. Red and black means that we've got um, going onto the ground, and we're going to have our red and black the other way round. I do believe that that's going to be in there, and that's going to be there. I will do a quick little check because it's always good to just make sure that says VCC plus, and it does. All right, then. So that's connected up. That's why I just showed you it without the wires there because this is a bit of a bit of a mess. We'll pop on our power supply now we're going to be using the waveforms uh, with this with the um, analog discovery 2 because it's a 14 bit and it works really well with audio i do like that now the first thing i'm going to do is just quick check again i'm going to the uh, power supply required for this and I do believe it's not plus minus 15 to plus minus 45. And it says the output power is 100 watts at 8 ohms at plus minus 42 volts. And there should be a quiescent current of approximately 30 milliamps. Now, there's no way of adjusting the quiescent current on this. Um, there's no variable resistor, so that suggests to me that the very the quiescent current's fixed. And if it's 30 milliamp and you've got that big old voltage range, as the voltage goes up and temperature goes up, the quiescent current will rise. All right, this um, it will rise, especially with the voltage going up. So I'm not quite sure. We'll have to have a peek at that, and it's easy enough for us to look at it because we can just look over here and see what current's being used. Uh, when this is on. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to put this into its tracking mode. All right, so that's enabled. And we're on 15 volts already on this thing, so that's good enough. We'll start off with 15 volts. And while we do that, actually, let's just have a little look at the uh, quiescent current there. Uh, let me just put that in a little closer so you can see. Uh, we're just looking at the, the ampage, and this is for one channel, remember, so combined, we've got like 40 milliamp quiescent current, and that's at 15 volts. Now, if I start turning the voltage up, just to just put it across there, five, let's say we're going to go for the 30, yeah, 32. Now, we can see that that quiescent current is going up right we're not on 30 milliamps and we're just going up and we're going up 
we're going up. So it reckons 42 volts it can go up to, or 45 volts. And as you can see, the quiescent current would be going rising, rising, rising. So I'm going to turn that down. I don't like the idea that it's going to go up that high anyway. Uh, hmm, let's have a look. 25 volts. So it just stabilizes out a little bit. All right, we'll call that stable, 25 volts, yeah? So let's just say if it was 24 volts, that'd probably be even better. Okay, let me just back that out again. Okay, guys, so I just wanted to do a quick little, what I meant by the quiescent current will change with temperature as well. So there's no input going into this at the moment. We're just going to power it on. And what we're going to notice is that the quiescent current there will rise. As this warms up, it'll rise. Now, obviously, it's not going to rise as much as what it would um, regarding voltage, but nevertheless, with temperature, this will still rise. And because we wanted to understand whether it was any good for, you know, the 42 volts range getting straight in there, you know, we can obviously see that that's not going to stick to 13 milliamp. Anyway, that's it. It's rising and that's what I wanted to show. So let's, uh, in actual fact, I'm going to leave that there because we're going to start these, these tests now. And first of all, we'll just get this going on the waveforms. And we are at, uh, on here we've got 5 volts per division, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, yep. There's channel 2, um, that, just ignore that, we're only doing channel 1 here. Um, we've got a time base 5 milliamps, we're going to put that down to 500 so we can see the nice sinusoidal curve. And we're going to switch this on now, and just start going up on the input there. And so we can see we've got a peak to peak of 30 volts. We keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. So we want to just push it to where it starts clipping. And I think I saw it clipping top and bottom nice and symmetrically. It's going to bat that off to around about there. And we'll just change the time base of this so it looks a bit more easier to read. Now by the looks of this, it looks like there's some distortion there anyway. So let's just turn this down a little tiny bit. We get that so it looks reasonably nice. We turn it all the way down there, look, that's no good. But that's too much. So let's just, uh, let's just say we can push it to about there and have a quick little look at that again just to make sure it's not doing anything dodgy. So we'll look at it here. That looks present enough. That looks okay. Don't need to be anything wrong with that. Uh, I'm going to put that like that. And so that's what we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop that there. Stop that there. We can see that we've got a 765 millivolt input going into that. And we could see what was going on with the, the, um, the current there. Uh, let's just look across here. So these are all, let's see, 65 uh, down. So there's no way you're going to hear any of this. This is just the other harmonics. It's nothing bad. We've got a nice low noise floor in general. It's all right. So, uh, you know, can't say this is bad at all. Now, I'm not going to bother doing a sweep on here. What I am going to do is um, we'll just stick on the other uh, bit of software, which is the audio analyzer. For that, we want to go into Windows. Okay, guys, so we've got the audio analyzer software. So we're set up here 10 hertz, 20,000 hertz, bandwidth 50k. And we're going to go at 5 watts, 8 ohms. And we're just going to look at it like that. The 5 watts because we don't want too much noise to be in there by being, you know, really low. 1 watt, you can have a big noise to a um, signal. Okay, so there we are at uh, 1720 kilohertz. 0 0.1, we've got a little bit of a spike there, but it's only 0 0.14. And all this stays reasonably nice. Now I'm just going to quickly do this again at 10 watts. And um, just to see what the difference is going to be. All right, just before I do that, let's just check out, first of all, get rid of the noise out of the signal. And there you go, that looks a lot more, a lot more tame. What, what is it like at 20 hertz? Uh, not 
0.05. All right, that's at 20 hertz. Now, my speakers aren't going to be able to do anything with this until we get to 30, 34 hertz. So back here, and we got 0.04. That's beautiful. Now, it's just going on my speakers. Uh, you know, so that, that, that's absolutely great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the noise back in again. And I'm just going to go for this at 10 watts, okay? That's our 10 watts, and again, that looks lovely. 20 hertz, nice and low, 0 0.09. I've got a peak here, 0 0.12. There, we get rid of the noise. And we look at that again, and that's, uh, that's lovely, 0 0.07. Our peak here now is around about 0 0.06. Lovely. Can't really complain with that, can't really complain at all. Let's switch it over to this and we're going to go from 1 to 100 watts. We're going to allow for 1% distortion uh, where it will switch itself off and we'll see what we get out of this. Remember we've got 25 volts going in, besides with negative positive 25 volts. Okay, that's lovely. I mean look at this, look. so if you've got your music going around 25 watts here, between 25 and uh, 30 watts. At, uh, you're at, uh, where are you there? You're at uh, 0 0.04 in this area. Lovely. Um, and so we can get uh, 30 watts at that voltage. You got 33 there before you get to, uh, that's at 0.5%. At the 1% there, it's uh, 34 volts. 34 watts. But 33.2 there. So that's nice. A uh, quick look at the frequency response. Here we're going to put a level in of uh, point, point, point 0.3, point 0.4, let's just go point 0.4, and um, yep, yeah, channel 1, and run that. Oh, what can I say, very nice. That is very nice, that's from our uh, 20 hertz there, and there's, look, there's, even from this at 10 hertz, which really we're not, but the 30 hertz is where we had you know, decent uh, audio range. And the difference between this and this here is 0 0.02 there. Uh, if we put that back to the 20 there, 0 0.08. And we go 0 uh, minus 0.16. Uh, so, you know, 0 0.09 there on 40. That's our 30 ish. Uh, 20 yeah nothing really to report that's uh, that's very nice that's very nice so um right all right well i'm gonna say then just let's back out of that for a second come back to this that's a winner that's a winner winner chicken dinner and i'll tell you for why because that was uh, 13 pounds for two channels and free shipping and I'll tell you a quick little tip. The reason why I go for the free ship and then everything is because everything I buy off AliExpress and lots of other places, I get 10% back, 10% cash back. All right, there's a, for the UK guys, I'm not sure what it would be in the United States or around the world, sorry. But for the UK guys, completesavings.co.uk and you can do RS Components, Farnell you can, uh, AliExpress, Banggood, uh, there's a whole bunch of them out there and you can get 10% back on everything. So that's the way I look at it every time I think, all right, £13.88, so I get £1.38 back. But it's £1.38. Uh, you don't get it back on shipping and you don't get it back on taxes either. So if you find stuff and it's always like, sh and they say it's like, yeah, £1 for the amplifier, but 30 quid for shipping, you're not going to get anything back really. But for this sort of thing, it's all good. Right, that's it for that, guys. That's, uh, it's got a big thumbs up from me. Big thumbs up this one, and, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.